We're in summer Sundays, so there's no kids work. Kids all stay in. But kids, you're going to be involved. Okay, there is chocolate. There is sweets if you get involved. So uh, we're going to have some fun learning a bit more about Jesus. Um, we've been going through a series um, in the Bible on Romans 5, verses 1 to 5. The first few verses of Romans 5, 1 to 5. We've called it Five Alive. And it's all about living uh, in the fullness of what Jesus has got for us. So Daniel is going to read the scripture for us. Come on, Daniel. Good lad. Do you want me to hold the mic? Yeah, go for it. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we, are now sta- which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. Thank you very much. Well done. Brilliant. So today's message is all about the fact that hope comes full circle. So every part of our lives, if we love Jesus, we've got hope. Okay, in the good times, in the tough times, when we're enduring, when we're having character building, hope is always there for us. So, um, we are going to look into that. I just need to get my little bits. So, I am ready. Wonderful. Right. So, have we got a PowerPoint? Thank you. So, just because we're in that middle bit, I just want to quickly recap where we're at in the series. So... When we start following Jesus, we come to a point in our lives when we start following Jesus. For some of us, it's a process. For some of us, it's an event at a holiday club or an alpha or a Bible week or something like that. We've come to Christ. But for some of us, it's a process. But there's that point when we start believing in Jesus. And when we start believing in Jesus, we are justified by faith, which is a really long word. Not a word that we generally use much in English. And when we do use it, we often use the other meaning of it. The word means just before God. We are not guilty. And not just that, we're also declared righteous. Okay, and the tense that's used there is that it's boom. At that point, you become just before God, but you still are. It's amazing. All right? First thing in that passage. Second thing in that passage is that we have peace with God. God gives us peace. We were once enemies with God, now we're at peace with him. And I think when I did that sermon, I said peace stood for positioned eternally at Christ's expense. Okay? We have peace with God. Our position is that we are just and that we have peace with God forevermore. Isn't that good? Yeah? Christine thinks it's good. Anyone else think that's good? Yeah, come on, it's good, isn't it? And then Warren helped us to see that we have access by faith. He had a bunch of keys, didn't he? Do you remember that poor child that came up and was trying to unlock the cabinet with all the keys? And then needed the one key. See, faith gives us that key that we have access by faith into this thing that we stand in. And we stand in grace. Do you remember poor Elodie was standing in baked beans? Yeah. It was good, wasn't it? You enjoyed it. Come on, you're smiling. She was standing in baked beans, representing standing in our own works. We don't want that. We want to stand in grace, don't we? And so we get to stand in grace. We get to stand in God's favor. And then we got in the series to the fact that we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We're rejoicing. We're anchoring our joy in the future hope of what Jesus has done. Amazing, isn't it? And then, more than that, we rejoice in our sufferings. Sufferings grow us. I don't like suffering. I don't like some of the seasons of life that I've gone through and that we're even going through right now. I'm not not enjoying them, but I know that God is at work. And so I can rejoice that God works in the good times and the bad times. He's at work because he's building endurance. He's building resilience. He's building strength. He's building, therefore, character. And because he's changing us and building our character, 
making us more loving, making us more kind, making us more empathetic to others, that also leads to hope, okay? And God is building hope in us. And so it's kind of like a full circle because we start with hope. We rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We're going through suffering. We're going through endurance. We're getting our characters building. And it comes back to hope. And hope does not disappoint us, doesn't put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out in our hearts. Now, I'm not going to steal next week's thunder for God's love, or the week after that, for the fact that the Holy Spirit is poured out into us. So we're going to talk about how hope does not put us to shame. Hope is steadfast and it's sure. Okay? So, let's have a look. Do we need to go to the next slide? Yeah, we do. So, there is a difference between what the world calls hope and what the Bible calls hope. So, some of the things that people hope for, what would they be? Let's have a look. We've got a thing here. So, people in the world, they hope for, ooh, nice house. Hope that one day I'll get a nice house. Hope that I'll win the lottery. Fat chance of that, the house always wins. I hope that there'll be a banquet to eat when I get home for lunch. Kids, what's that? You can't see it, can you? What's that? PlayStation. Are you hoping for a new PlayStation? Always. Mum says, oh no, that is an upside down trophy. You've got lots of them. Okay, so he doesn't need to hope for that. He's got them already. A new bicycle. Uh, a new car, Cameron. Uh, oh, look. Some people are hoping for love. Uh, and then back to the house. Okay, so what I need is a couple of children. Yeah, come on then. Little children and big children, come on. Come on down. I can have four. So the first four that get here. Oh my goodness. Okay, we're going to change the game. Different prize. Right. Come on. It's all right. Come on, come on. Come and sit down. Right, okay, so... Hello, what are you hoping for? What would you, I haven't got the prize. You're only going to get some sweets if you win. But what would you hope for out of that little lot? What would you like? Don't take too long because there's millions of you. Go on. Okay, do you want to spin it? Spin it. Give it a good spin. Oh, you didn't get the bicycle. Okay, wait just there because we never know what's going to happen next. Arlo, what would you hope for? Money. Money. Oh, you're going to get love. <laughs> oh, no. Wait there, wait there, because you never know what's going to happen next. Right, who we got next? What would you like, Moi? You'd like a house? Come on. She's got her long-term priorities sorted out, Moi. Oh, you're going to get love again? Whoa. Okay, wait just there. Okay, Ariel, what would you hope for if it was worldly hope? A trophy. A trophy. Fast car. Yeah, you'll take that instead. Go on, have way over there. Right, go on then. What would you like to hope for? Banquet. A banquet. You got your priorities straight, mate. Oh, he gets money. Ah. Oh. Go on then. What do you hope for? Money. Go on, go for it. Give it a spin. Love. Okay, here we go. Go on, give it a spin. What would you like? What would you like to hope for? A trophy, okay. Love. The love's popular. There's not weighted, by the way. Right, what would you like, sweetie? You'd like a fast car? No? Yeah, fast car? Give it a spin then. Ooh, a house. What would a house. Go on the way over there. What would you like? What would you like out of that list of things? What do you think? You want a fast car? Go on then, give it a spin. Oh, it's a house. So this is worldly, worldly hope. And I thought some of them might get it, but they didn't. Because hope never often works out, does it? We hope for good weather for the barbecue. It's England. We hope that England will bring it home. We hope for all sorts of things. 
What am I hoping for? All food. <laughs> nope, I get a house. Okay, so that's worldly hope, and worldly hope often disappoints. What happens if we hope in Jesus? Do you want to give it a spin? Oh, hold on, can you open the bag of sweets? Because I think we're going to I think they might get it this time. Right, go on then, give it a spin, see if you get Jesus. You're hoping in Jesus. Yay! Have a bag of sweets. Hoping in Jesus. Oh, what a surprise, Jesus. <laughs> hoping in Jesus. Pretty cool. Another bag of sweets. Go on, have another spin. It's getting a bit tight, isn't it? There go, give it a spin. There we go. Oh, look, it's got Jesus. Well done. Hoping in Jesus. Brilliant. Another bag of sweets. Here we go. Which Jesus? Yes. Go on then. Yes, it was. Surprise, isn't it? <laughs> Go on then. Hoping in God. We're putting our hope and it's not going to be put to shame because Jesus. Yeah. Wow. Go on then. There we go. Another sweetie bag. Right, so worldly hope doesn't always match up. People hope for all sorts of things and they don't get it. But when we put our hope in Jesus, hope does not put us to shame. When we put our hope in Christ, okay, it doesn't put us to shame. Beautiful. Wow. Love YouTube. Excellent. So good. Right. So, biblical hope is so much stronger than worldly hope because biblical hope is based on something much more steadfast, much more secure. Hebrews 6 Verse 19, which is the next slide, says this, This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. When we hope in Jesus, it's a steadfast anchor. On a ship, when it's getting blown about, they put the anchor down and it holds it safe and secure. Our hope in Jesus will never put us to shame. It's a steadfast, it's a strong and trustworthy anchor. And it will lead us, it says there, it will lead us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. It takes us back to Warren's message about access by faith. When Jesus died on the cross, the temple curtain was split in two. And the curtain used to stop people going into the most holy place, the place where God's presence dwelt. And that temple curtain was torn in two permanently from top to bottom. Okay, we have access. And our hope gives us access into the presence of God continuously and permanently and forevermore. Our biblical hope is a sure and steadfast anchor. Now, if you know your Bibles, you will know that there is a verse in the Old, script, Old Testament that's slightly uncomfortable when it comes to the word hope. Proverbs 13 verse uh, 12 says this, hope deferred makes the heart sick but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life it's a kind of little bit of a bit of an objection isn't it because in our lives when we're going through suffering which was in our passage when we're in a time when we've got to endure when we're in a time when God is building character in us it's easy to lose hope the thing that we've been praying for, the thing that we've been looking to the Lord for, and it seems to be ever far away. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. You think of Abraham in the Old, in the Old Testament. He was promised that he was going to have children innumerable. He's 75 years old. He's hitting 90, and he's still waiting for the promise. Hope can disappear at that point when you're waiting a long time for the thing that you've been praying for. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. And yet our New Testament scripture tells us that we start by rejoicing in hope and we rejoice in suffering, we rejoice in character, we rejoice as characters, be, uh, rejoice in uh, endurance being built because suffering leads to endurance, leads to character, leads to hope. We're rejoicing in all of that. Hope comes full circle. So how do we reconcile it all? What is the Lord doing? Some of you may have lost hope for certain things. Some of you might be going through a season where it's tough. And I think what's got, what, what this scripture here is showing us is that there's a bit of a battle sometimes to life where Satan wants to rob us of joy, wants to rob us of hope, wants to lie to us and tell us it's not going to happen. We won't better press through. 
So I find another scripture, next slide, quite helpful. Proverbs 25, 2 says this, It is the glory of God to conceal things, but the glory of kings to search things out. Sometimes the Lord hides things so that we've got to search for them. And he hides them for us, not from us. Okay? He hides them for us, not from us. Sometimes we've got to press through. Sometimes we've got to pray. Sometimes we've got to seek the Lord. We've got to find it. We've got to find, you know, the hope again. So, kids, this time, uh, oh, I've got, how many sweets have we got? We've got a few left. Okay, we've got a bit of treasure left. So, what I need is some, some couple of kids because I think you need to work in teams. And they need to be little kids this time, maybe with a bit of help from an older kid. You're an older king, but you're always volunteering. Have I got any kids to help? There's one. Are you gonna, do you want to do it? No, she doesn't. Right, come on then. First small child to run down here gets to play this game. Here we go. Come on then. Well done. You see, if you're outside playing, you miss out on the treasure. <laughs> I know. They're right, okay. So, I've got a series of clues. Because God sometimes, he hides things for us. So that we've got to search them out. We've got to seek them out. And in seeking them out, we grow. And we grow in the character. We grow in the endurance. We grow in, in, in hope and all those things. Are you good at reading? Are you good at working out puzzles? Right, there you go. There's clue number one. Open it up and follow what you've got to do, and then see what happens when you get to clue number six. All right? We shall carry on while she's doing that. So, the Lord... What's it say? Oh, should we follow you around? I think this will be fun, won't it? Where's the microphone? (laughs) We got a microphone somewhere? Oh, there it is. Right. Do you want to read that clue out? Find who, is, found, find who is standing at the front door welcoming people to the... Who do you think that was? Um. Who's always standing at the front door of the church? Ah, <laughs> oh. go on then. Go on, find her. You've got to go to her. There's clue number two. I'm really hoping I got them in order. <laughs> or we're in trouble. What does number two say? Find who was playing the guitar today. There's a slight flaw in the plan, but yeah. <laughs> Find the person who was singing, not the person who was playing. <laughs> who was singing? Normally plays the guitar. Who was singing today? Who was singing today? There we go. Okay, what's the next clue? See, sometimes the Lord hides things for us. He wants us to press on in prayer. He wants us to press on in Scripture. He wants to press on in fellowship. He's got treasure hidden for us somewhere. What have we got now? What's this next clue? Try the back of the disabled toilet door. Ah, off you go then. <laughs> Yeah, I've made it. That, yeah, keep going. Yeah, yeah. I'm really hoping nobody was naughty and stole the clue. <laughs> there we go. Christine's helping you. See, along the journey of life, as we're seeking out, seeking out the treasure, we have Christian friends that help us, like Christine. Is somebody in there? No, no, that's the one. Have we found a clue? It was there five minutes ago. That's good. Okay, come on, run over. What's the clue say? So Christian life, we're looking for the treasure. We're praying. We're seeking. We're getting other Christians to help us. We're opening the next envelope. God is hiding treasure for us, not from us. Here we go. It's there. Keep going. That's that. Here we go. Right. Shall I take some of the rubbish? Okay. There we go. Open the clue up. Ask who is operating the sound desk today. Ooh. So do you know what the sound desk is? That thing. That thing over there. Go and find the man that's operating the sound desk and see what they can do. Ooh. 
Excellent. Come on in. <coughs> what have we got now? What's the next clue? It's suffering for everybody, isn't it? You're having to wait. <laughs> and in this, there's endurance being built, and there's character, and there's hope coming. Have you got hope still? Are you enduring this? Yes. Are you hopeful that something's going to come at the end? Yes. Are you hoping that God's got some treasure for you? Or Andy has, anyway. Now, here we go. That's it. There we go. Right, so I take the rubbish. Okay, what does this clue say? Find someone who speaks Ukrainian. Oh, you've got to find someone that speaks Ukrainian. This sort of area here, there's a man <laughs> speaking. He's translating, but he's helping other people. See if you can see somebody who's Ukrainian who's smiling at you. Oh, look. Find a Ukrainian smiling. <laughs> That's it. We're not going to take forever. Okay. Do you want to open up the clue? Go back to Andy at the front and ask him for the sweets. <laughs> oh yes of course you can right now you've got a choice so I think lots of children will probably want sweets do you want chocolate or sweeties yeah yeah go for it one of each come on then grab a that's a boost they give you a boost after all that hard work of looking they give you a boost yes Okay. Right, who else wants some treasure? Oh, that was useless, wasn't it? That was a big one wanted treasure as well, wasn't it? Anyone else? Oh, Ivor, come on, you're translating well. There you go, Paul. Oh, missed. Whee! Oh, sorry. Taking out the children. There you go. Yeah, mind, mind. Okay. Oh, there's somebody over here that wanted some, wasn't there? Yeah? Oh, I'm going to hit your dad. <laughs> Never throw sweets at the congregation. Right. The dangerous thing is now I've got chocolate, but I daren't throw the chocolate. So, because I'll probably kill somebody. Right. So, um, <laughs> what's the Bible say about asking? Ask and you'll receive. What are you doing holding your mum's hand down? That's not nice. There we go. Right, I got the last one. You've got sweets in your hand. Right, it's not school. You don't have to stick your hand up. What you have to do is come down quickly and say, Andy. Oh, no, that's a big mistake, isn't it? Oh, oh no. Oh, too slow. Right, brilliant. Well done, everybody. Okay, I think my expectation is that, that, that people who got Harry Bows might share them. Uh, if not, I might have some. Yeah, I've got some mints. Okay, so part of the Christian life is that we do go through stuff, don't we? We go through suffering, and suffering is intended to... Part of the thing about suffering, we're in a world where it is a battle, but part of the thing about suffering it is it is building endurance in us. The Lord is hiding that for us. We can find endurance, and as we find endurance, we grow in character. And as we grow in character, it comes back to the full circle of having hope. And I think what the, what the enemy tries to do sometimes is he, he tries to rob us of hope in the dark times. When you're going through a dark time, the enemy comes to, Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, he says the thief comes to steal, to kill and destroy. And what the enemy does is he comes to, comes to rob us. So when we're going through suffering, when we're going through that time when we've got to endure, when we're going through that time when God is building character in us, the enemy will try and come and, and try and rob you of hope. And my goodness, you know, it's so easy to be robbed of hope, isn't it? You know, anxiety comes, uh, fear comes, uh, exhaustion comes, we get weary. The hope, 
deferred makes the heart sick. And it's the enemy's strategy to kind of rob you of hope. Whereas Jesus says, uh, I have come that you might have life and have it to the full. Where, God, where the devil wants to rob us of kind of that beauty of, of the sacrifice and obedience and growing in Christ. Okay, the enemy wants to rob us of that. The Lord, you know, he sometimes hides these things so that we have to dig into him and that we grow. We get that beauty of, of, of sacrifice, that beauty of obeying, that beauty of searching things out and finding God in the midst of it all. The enemy wants to rob us of fulfilling our potential most people give up just before the blessing, don't they? Just before the blessing, they give up. God wants us to keep pushing through, and we will find it. Psalm uh, 42, verse 5 says this, Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. You know, the psalmist is saying, come on, why are you so fed up? You know, I found myself praying this at times. Andy, why are you so fed up? Come on, hope in God. Put your hope back in God. Anchor your hope in that steadfast and sure anchor that is God. And you will, you will see that breakthrough coming. Yeah? Commanding yourself. Come on, I will hope in God. I'm not going to look down and be under the circumstances. I'm going to be more than a conqueror because of what Jesus has done for me. We've all got stuff. I think one of the things that I've learned in this season that we're going through and in the season of COVID is that we've all got stuff that we're going through. Every single person. There's all things that are going on in people's lives, whether there's loss, uh, where's my list? If I was one of those sort of you know, mega church preach things. So I'd have a whole list out that I can get and I can't see it. Where's it gone? We're going through loss. Some are going through traumas. Some are going through financial difficulties. Job loss. Having to move countries. Family troubles. All sorts of different things that are pressing in. Everybody is carrying stuff. But in every circumstance, the Lord is also preparing a table for us. Psalm 23 verse 4 says that he prepares a table in the midst of our enemies. He prepares a table before us. God has this delight. We can grow in hope in every phase of life, in the suffering, in the endurance, in the character, in the hope. But sometimes he wants us to search for it. He wants us to dig deep. He wants us to press in to what he's got for us. So I think what I want you to know today, what I want us to go away with today, is that there's always hope. Hope comes full circle in every, everything. When you're on the top, there's hope. When you're at the bottom, there is hope. Whatever we're going through, there is hope. God always breaks through with hope, and he wants us to search it out and, 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 and press into it. And I felt this morning, kind of a little bit of a gear change, jumping probably to two verses ahead. I felt this morning that the, the Lord wanted to minister to each and every one of us. Felt God wanted to uh, bring an impartation of the Spirit afresh to us this morning. You know, as I was reading uh, the scriptures to do with this, um, uh, this sermon, there's one in Daniel 7 that talks about a weariness that comes on people. Some people today, you might need just a refreshing from the Lord. Some people, you're facing difficult circumstances and you've lost hope. God wants to restore hope this morning. He wants to bless you with hope because we can have hope when we're suffering we can have hope when we're having to endure we can have hope when we're getting that character building which is really painful it, it's there every stage of the christian life god's got hope for us so what i'd love us to do this morning is um an opportunity don't have to go for it if you don't want to but an opportunity for us to pray for lots of people uh, through a thing called a fire tunnel. Now, I mentioned this in the pre-service prayer this morning, and a couple of people had never heard of a fire tunnel. So I had to explain what a fire tunnel was, which was a good thing, because it reminded me on how to explain what a fire tunnel is. So what we're going to do...